Hi, I'm Ben. Um, we're here in Seward, Alaska, just outside of town, and this is my yurt and tree house and my greenhouse under construction. I started building it this summer with the idea that I was going to use it this summer. That didn't happen because I got pretty far behind and it was a bigger project than I thought. Next summer I'll be ready, hopefully. I mostly used recycled materials for the walls and then the Lexan for the sides. I went and bought, but I used pallets for the floor and then some leftover beams from another project. When I first built the yurt, I, you know, there was no driveway coming down this steep hill, but none of this, it was all trees, and I wanted something that I could have an easy foundation for. So I looked into building tree houses and made a purchase from Treehouse stuff for the Garnier limb, and it's a specific treehouse bolt, and you can actually see them right here. It's actually got a sliding bracket with a piece of UHMW, which actually makes it silent, so it doesn't creak and groan. Always been pretty silent. I picked the healthiest trees I could find, you know, we'll s only time will tell. <laughs> I feel like they definitely have an expiration date to them. The year I think I did in, I want to say 2010, everything else has just been kind of a super slow process. Don't have a lot of cash, so I do a lot of stuff by hand really slowly and it takes a while. Everything's <laughs> always under construction. This is my fancy staircase that, uh, I'll eventually change someday. Um, I made this little extension because the deck was a little a little narrow. Decided to add, you know, fire pit and some chairs and got my little barbecue. I've had guests here before and that's kind of the main spot to hang out, you know. Inside the yurt isn't the greatest unless it's raining out. And back here is the outhouse. It's not very fancy. It's just a miniature composting toilet with sawdust. I've got a large composting bin that I'll have set up back over there. Normally, I take it to my neighbor's composting bin. They don't use it for vegetables or anything. It's more for a lawn, garden, kind of like, don't take it to the dump kind of thing. And I've got the hose running down through here. This is just PEX tubing. Gravity feeds from a 300 gallon tank that I have that I fill up with another pump. It runs down to here into a pressure pump into my sink inside the yurt. And there I have a little catchment bucket. I pump that from the creek up to there. The filter system isn't great right now, but uh, hopefully in the future I'll use it a little more. Right now it's more for dishes and I kind of bring my own drinking water. Uh, you can see that white hose right down there. That's what I would pump it from the creek from with like a half horse um, pump with the generator running and it's pretty simple. And with 350 gallons or 300 gallons it's it takes a while to drain just doing dishes. But eventually I'll have a, I like to have a cleaner tank and a better system for the treehouse where it actually flows out into a gray water system. And this is inside. Pretty simple. Um, just the bed for now and my wood stove table. Small kitchen area. This was uh, just recycled drawers from uh, my brother's remodel and then <laughs> Icebox for my other, bro other brother's remodel. I have a gra the gravity fed sink with the pressure pump here that I can turn off and on and then a small catchment bucket and eventually I'll probably do an actual drain outside but in the winter it kind of freezes up so it's not really usable. Built the countertop and the frame and everything. I do cabinet work and interior stuff with my dad throughout the winter so I've got a nice shop to work in. Dining, crafts, whatever, pretty much the only place to sit or do anything in here. It's a small space. It's only a 16 foot yurt, so I try to spend time outside if I'm if I'm here. It's not not the greatest place to hang out if you're going to be indoors all the time. This is a yodel wood stove and they're actually really common. It I actually it actually came with the yurt. It's pretty small, but uh, once it's hot, it keeps the yurt extremely hot to the point where you want to open the door and then as soon as it goes out you know it tends to cool off pretty quick in here especially in the winter time. I know the the yurt makers try to say that there are four seasons but it's only four seasons that the stove is running constantly so always keep that in mind if you ever buy one. <laughs> when I stayed out here in the winter a little bit I would be pretty uh, pretty strict with the wood and just kind of make a fire when I was here and and then come back and heat it up and and then I'd leave and it'd be frozen when I got back. <laughs> and then I do have a small battery bank and I'll just charge that. Um, 
for for small power use just 12 volt you know outlets and it used to hook up to a solar panel but I couldn't it doesn't seem to work when I hooked it up to the voltmeter but yeah having a battery display is nice but it doesn't work that well all the time I don't use it too often unless I'm car camping or not here with the generator but then I do have one other LED here that comes off the ceiling off this 12 volt battery that also runs the pressure pump and it's all really a temporary setup I'd like to do it a lot better in the future it's kind of what I had sitting around well I bought the yurt on Craigslist for about half the price that they are new and uh, that was the biggest sell for getting the yurt I don't think I would buy one brand new unless I was gonna it was gonna be a rental and you knew it was gonna pay for itself or you were you knew you were gonna be moving a lot because it's they're really not that warm and uh, for 10 grand you can build a pretty nice stick built structure of probably a bigger size the insulation isn't great it's a four season yurt but um I mean once this when the stove's going it's really hot but um it's also hard to control you know it's either way too hot or really cold they are easy to set up and easy to take down the hardest part I would say is putting up the platform and the foundation you know and if you get have an elaborate foundation then you tend to not want to take it down again I do plan on taking that down and moving it somewhere else and building a stick built structure there at some point but that's what led me to the tree house because I wanted something a little bigger and something that would retain heat better and they're definitely not for a season you know unless you like to suffer eventually I would like to make a sauna hot tub area bathhouse whatever um, kind of in between the two structures that could be shared but that's a long ways down the road so uh, yeah now we can go check out the tree house it had nice trees it's on higher ground um, the trees were pretty healthy and uh, it was the best chance of a view I built this double knee brace bracket um, a couple years ago when I was building the deck I wanted a bigger deck and uh, had to add a few more trees and, uh, and then I had another friend weld me this giant bracket as well and then I've also had other friends weld different treehouse brackets throughout the the construction instead of paying for the expensive ones online but uh, they are the official treehouse bolts but um they're definitely worth buying they're really really stable really strong if you put them in right but it's like the most important part of your your treehouse I'm not gonna I don't want to give you instructions because it's kind of dangerous but um there's plenty of literature on the web to show you how to do it but they if you, if they're installed right they hold a lot of weight this is the start of the staircase right now just a ladder I'll have a gravel pad right here with the trees here I didn't want to dig into the ground and make a deep scar on the next to the roots and everything so I'm gonna do a gravel pad here and hopefully that'll save the tree roots a little bit and then from there I'll have a stair landing up to this chopped off tree here to another stair landing and then step right onto the deck and by then hopefully I'll have handrails Building it um, has taken a while. I'm a slow builder. It's been to my benefit though because I've used a lot of salvage materials. So the longer I wait, it seems the more material I end up collecting. The siding, for example, up top, all the horizontal siding was salvaged from a home remodel in town and it's just old cedar lap siding that never seems to go bad. And then all the vertical board and batten and window trim was all stuff that I milled here off trees from the property and then also the studs on the interior or almost all the studs on the interior were from another home remodel and I only use two by four studs to keep it light and uh, it's, it's a small structure so I don't feel like I feel the need for true two by six walls since it goes around the trees it's kind of hard to kind of hard to gauge it's kind of a weird shape never actually uh, measured it I mean, each wall is a different length, but I do plan, I did make tall walls, um, 10 foot walls, so that I can have a taller loft, and then I think that's important, I mean, I don't want a loft where I'm crawling around in or anything, I definitely consider that if you're building a small home. But this tree in particular, it kind of has, leans a lot, and I didn't actually want it part of the structure because of the leaning part, so when I did build this through the deck, I, I built it in the, in the idea that 
it can break away from the rest of the structure instead of totaling the treehouse. But uh, that's, you know, worst case scenario. And the inside is pretty messy. It's basically a tool shed at the moment. This is my generator that runs pretty much everything as far as tools and um, sometimes power for my batteries at the yurt if I'm staying up here or somebody else. Right now I've been kind of just collecting a lot of materials in here. I've got a lot of insulation that I bought off the internet or off Craigslist I think and then some traded insulation and then leftover siding. Pretty much just gathering materials. In the winter time when it gets colder and miserable outside I'll come in here and start doing interior work instead of wasting my time in the summer. Like I said, I'll have a loft in here. It'll either, I still haven't decided if I'll go all the way across or just to right about here and then have a little open area up top. I kind of like the headspace. From this wall here over to the other wall, I will install a wall with a sliding door and that'll have a small, a small bathroom with just a composting toilet and then a shower on one end and uh, hopefully enough room for a small sink in the middle. And that will take away quite a bit of the space in here, but I think it'll be worth it not having to go, you know, down out of the treehouse to use the bathroom. And then on the opposite side of the wall that'll be here, that'll be my kitchen area. The loft will, the imaginary loft will be the sleeping area. And then mostly storage too as well. But I do plan on renting it for a while before, before I live here, I guess. So I, I, I do feel like tree houses are, have an expiration date, so you know, no matter how well you build them, you know, they, shit happens. For myself, I might do a wood burning stove, but as far as renting it, I'll have a, a vented propane heater, um, but it has, it has to be vented or else it's just, the heat is too wet and it's not very good for the building and, or for yourself for that matter. So yeah, vented propane for a while and then maybe I might have a wood stove as well but uh, wood stoves are a lot of work and that's a big staircase to haul wood up so I'll have that tank that I have below the treehouse hooked up to another pressure pump hopefully that should be enough to get pressure up here and I've also thought about doing rainwater but I being underneath the trees with all the pine needles it's kind of more hassle than it actually is worth and then I do have a lot of birds around here my neighbor tends to feed the ravens so I have bird shit everywhere so I don't know how great the water catchment is up here. If you had to guess since you're doing a lot of reclaimed material how much do you think you have into this place? I don't want to know. I, just <laughs> um, I don't know. My goal is to get 10 grand from it from renting and then I feel like I can be satisfied. I know I have somewhere around 10 grand altogether, and that's more for expensive stuff and uh, paying friends to help me occasionally. I don't even think I, I don't even know if I have 10 grand into it. And it's been over such a long period. I really should have paid attention while I was building it, to be honest. Now I kind of forget what's recycled and salvaged and what isn't. The main, the main expense is plywood, it seemed like, plywood and roofing. You can use small pieces, but then you're just scabbing it together and it's not as strong. You have more leaks. I don't know. Somebody thinking about doing this, do you have any advice for somebody thinking about doing a tree house or a small structure like this? Yeah, build it on the ground. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Um, yeah, they, they look cool in the end, but it's, it's a lot of work. Just putting up siding alone, like I built scaffolding around the entire tree house, which I didn't think I was going to have to do. But in the end, I, I had to do it and I'll eventually have to take it down. And it's, it's not always, not easy putting up siding. Uh, you know, 12, 14 feet off the ground. Do you wish you would have built this on the ground rather than a treehouse? Uh, kinda, just because I think I probably would have been done by now if it wasn't in the treehouse, but I did want to have a treehouse and I wanted to build something unique and after I finish this I plan on building other unique structures. I don't know. I think it's boring to build a normal house. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Yeah, no problem.